Commanders fans, um, tough pill to swallow, man. Uh, that loss hurt, especially the way that we lost that game. Um, I hate to blame refs, but, you know, I've already talked about this already. I'm just pulling up the stats from the game. So I'm going to do studs and duds here real quick. I said I was going to bring that to you guys and then um, talk, about, talk about Ron saying that he's going to stick with Taylor Heineke. So, yes, uh, the memes on Twitter and, and social media were hilarious um showing uh there was one with the titanic it was like leonardo dicaprio uh, with darnay holmes holding curtis you know bear hugging him hugging him like you know it was a christmas family hug that's how bad the hug was man it was just so egregious and just so awful man it really just pisses me off to see stuff like that happen when the refs can control the game um the outcome of a game and then you see terry giving the thumbs up to the ref the ref says something back Terry said that the ref told him that he was good. The ref is just tangling on his flag, ready and just pressed to throw it. He already made up in his mind that he was going to throw that flag. I don't know where he was betting, if he bet on something or bet on the uh, Giants to win, but the fix was clearly in. And that's the last thing I'm going to say about the refs. And also, there was another meme where Curtis Samuel was jumping out of a plane. And it's kind of like, you know, when you jump out of the plane or whatever, the parachute or whatever, and you got a trainer behind you and they're just hugging you. And then they pull the little uh, string and then they let you off. That's basically what it was. That was a hilarious meme. Um, that's how bad it was. That's how bad. He clearly was hugging Curtis Samuel. You don't call that flag. Michael Wilborn called him out. Kevin Durant called him out. Um, the, the ref from Fox called him out. Better pull up. I don't know what his name is. I, I got to pull up real quick. Um, all this is being said. Dan Dean Blendino, he said it as well. Chris Collinsworth, Dungy, all of them. Uh, Mike Tirico, everybody has said it. Um, everybody has come out and said it. That It was just, it was awful. That's just terrible. It's, it's terrible for the game of football. It, it's bad for the game of football to clearly cheat the commanders like that. Like I said, I'm preaching to the choir. It's not going to put a win in the win column, but you got to call these refs for that, man. That's just, it's just awful. It's egregious. It's disrespectful. It's disrespectful to the game of football. Yes, I get it. Yes, Scott Turner was bad. Ron Rivera was, had made some, some terrible decision-making. Um, the offensive line got beat by Thibodeau. The refs didn't go out there and sack Taylor Heineke. Thibodeau went out there and sacked Taylor Heineke. Leno was Leno gave up a sack. Um, our offensive line just got beat again. The offensive line got beat two weeks ago when we tied them. They gave up five sacks. Thibodeau was eaten in that game in the tie as well. Aziz Atawari was eaten as well. And they got beat again. The offensive line is a problem. Um, they're one of my duds. Taylor Heineke didn't have one of his better games. He threw he should have thrown an interception. So, you know, you can you can play both sides, but at the same time, I think the football guys looking at it, we got screwed more. And it's not about a contest who gets, you know, who gets duped or gets, you know, cheated more. It is what it is. We didn't stop Saquon when we needed to stop Saquon. We didn't stop Daniel Jones on a fourth and nine pass to Richie James. You know, Ron Rivera was the guy that decided to punt the football when we were on the Giants 34. That's a dud move right there. Scott Turner decided to run the football with Curtis Samuel instead of Brian Robinson. That's two duds. The flea flicker was a dud. Um, third and three, went up the middle of Curtis Samuel. That was a dud. Running a, another reverse with Curtis Samuel. That was another dud by Scott Turner. Scott Turner, I think he's just better suited to be a quarterback's coach. I just don't think he he has what it takes to be an offensive coordinator. Now, if we lose this year, then the new owner, whoever, doesn't want Ron Rivera to come back. Scott Turner, do whatever you want to do. I don't know if he's going to be on ESPN or whatever. or But, you know, I just don't think he's cut out to be an offensive coordinator in the NFL. Just point blank, period. He's just not. He's just not that guy. He's not that guy. Um Getting to more, I guess I'll do duds. Logan Thomas has fell falling off, man. I got the PFF grades as well. Logan Thomas is grades the worst out of everybody on the offensive side of the football. Everybody on the offensive side of the football. He can't move anymore. He moves like a snail. He moves like a like a like a turtle, a, a snail. He, he's as slow as a snail. He just can't move anymore. And I'm a Logan Thomas fan. Um, you know, went to Virginia Tech, all that good stuff. Had a good year two years ago. Was a, a bargain bin shopping kind of signing, and he was a steal as a signing. But the guy can't cat. He, he dropped the pass. He can't run block. He can't pass block. It's like, you might as well put Bates out there. Cole Turner, just let the young guys play. We're going to have to draft a tight end. We're going to have to sign a tight end. We're going to have to revamp this, this tight end room. Cole Turner needs more opportunities. Now, he's not great pass blocking either or run blocking either. But you might as well go with the young guy. And I think I got to look at his salary and look at the uh, dead cap or whatever. Because I know we signed him to a new deal last year. Or, or it was a two off seasons ago after he had that good year. And if, if the dead cap isn't that much, then you, you just got to move on from him. It is what it is. It's unfortunate because of the ACL injury from Yannick Ngakwe going low on Logan Thomas. But he's just not that guy anymore. He's just not. Uh, offensive rate was a 31.5. 
Passing grade was a 41.9. Run blocking grade was a 30.6. You can't run block. You, you got to sit. That's our bread and butter. That's our identity. If you can't run block, you got to sit. You got to sit. Um, other uh, John Boston, we'll get that out of the way. He just got cooked by Saquon Barley. Barkley. It was like a, it was like an AM1 crossover. Barkley went one way, came back, and then crossed over again. And, and John Boston was tap dancing because uh, he got crossed up so bad by Saquon Barkley. And that's on Ron. That's on the personnel. You know we need more linebackers. You barely have any depth. Cole Holcomb out for the year, and you got to play John Bostic, who can barely barely move. Another guy as slow as a snail. Moving to quicksand. Um, I'll look up his PFF grade in a second. Uh, Lano had a good PFF grade, but just the last two weeks, him giving up sacks to Thibodeau, man. <laughs> Nick Bosa's is an animal, man. He is. He's an animal. So I'm very concerned with that matchup. I just am. The whole offensive line against the, the Niners D line is going to be an uphill battle for sure. Um, Leno, he graded out with a 63.2 offensive grade, a 71.8 pass blocking grade. I, you know, PFF, they have a, they have a different grading system. I guess we got to go back and watch the tape, but last two weeks, him, you know, he, he hasn't won his matchup in my opinion. Uh, where I said Ron Rivera going for two when we didn't have to, and then they called an offensive pass interference on Jahan Dotson. Why even put your team in that situation? It was so unnecessary to, to go for two. It would have been 10 to 14, like. It's the third quarter. Like, why are you going for two? Like, just so silly, silly mistakes. And then Joey Slot misses the extra point. That's not Ron's fault, but you put the team in that situation. He always does. The Lions game going for two. The, the Giants game going for two, two years ago. Just silly mistakes from Ron. That's why I said every key is a victory. Ron Rivera. Every time it's the first key to victory I say. Ron Rivera decision making. Just boneheaded, mental, common, common knowledge, common sense football. He just doesn't have it. He just doesn't have it. Doesn't have it. Um, putting on the 34, being conservative, being soft, being conservative, being scared money, don't make no money. And Brian Dable, they called a fourth and nine and they went for it and then they got it, you know? So it was two different stratos stratospheres of aggressive, of, of aggressive. Brian Dable was aggressive at the right time. Ron Rivera was not. It just wasn't. Um, I already talked about, <clears throat> excuse me, Scott Turner enough. Logan Thomas, bad. Heineke with the fumbling. He's got to clean that up. And he almost threw an interception to a uh, number 20. His last name is Love or something like that. Or McLeod. I can't remember. But he almost threw an interception. Um, so you got to be better with that. The arm strength is limited. Curtis Samuel, if he would have threw that farther, that might have been a touchdown. So that's on that's on Taylor, too. Even though it's a completion, we got to score because we don't score in the red zone. So if you can score a, on a big play, which we don't really get big plays like that, you got to take advantage of that opportunity. And I thought he missed that there. So the fumbles got to clean that up. The almost interception was bad. He always, you know, has at least one or two turnover-worthy plays in every game. But, of course, he has one or two Houdini plays. In every game. So, um, and Scott Derner didn't run the ball enough for Brian Robinson in the second half. You look at their carries. I think Brian Robinson only had like four second half carries. Gibson only had like two uh, second half carries. We didn't run the ball enough in the second half. I know we finally got the ball to Terry McLaurin, but it's just a little too late that we got a ball to him. And uh, nobody can check him. I already said that. Terry had eight catches for 105 yards. Jahan Dyson was a stud. Easily, we know why. The touchdown catch had another big catch, a 61 yarder. He's a stud. He needs the ball more, too. Brian Robinson is a stud, 87 yards on the ground. He's a stud. Uh, Derek Forrest, good play out there with the uh, pass breakup. Thought he should have got an interception. Danny Johnson played well, stepped up for BSJ, for Ben St. Juice. He had a couple pass deflections, big pass deflection on third down, and a big pass deflection at the beginning of the game as well. Uh, I thought Montez Sweat played well. He um, didn't get to the quarterback. He didn't get any sacks, but he had pressures. He was back there. He was giving Evan Neal a tough time. He was. I got to give Montez Sweat his credit. Bobby McCain, I thought he played well as well, uh, playing out of the slot. 87.3 uh, PFF grade. So he got this. He um, started a slot. He was the best um, defensive player per PFF. Danny Johnson was number two at 82.6. Montez Sweat was number three at 81.9. David Mayo, number four. Only had four snaps, though. 81.8. Jamin Davis, 74.3, was fifth. John Allen, 69.6. Had a couple pressures. Had like one pressure and an attack for loss. They did keep him quiet for the most of the game. They just doubled him the whole game. Um, he wasn't needing any sacks or any big plays like that, but he was effective. Um, and we just didn't stop the run. So that was disappointing on the front four. And Saquon Barker and the linebackers as well. Um, Kendall Fuller, 67.7. F.E. Obato, 65.9. Casey Tuhill, 63.7. Defoe, 61.8. Cam Curl had a 55.0. He was one of his worst PFF grades. Bostic was the worst PFF graded player with 34.2. Um, move over quickly to the offensive side of the ball. Uh, let's see here. 
Jahan Dawson was the highest graded with 81.8. Brian Robinson, 79.3. Cornelius Lucas, 73.7. Terry McLaurin, 72.9. So they were the top four. Andrew Norwell was 72.8. Those were the top five highest graded PFF guys. Of course, Jahan makes sense. Terry makes sense. B-Rob makes sense, obviously. Um, the worst was Logan Thomas, like I said before. Trey Turner was pretty bad, 56.9. Um, Leno had a 63.2 and a 71.8 pass blocking grade. Heineke with a 50... 8.4, probably because of the turnover-worthy play and the two fumbles that he had. 58.1 passing grade as well. So, um, you know, his, his arm strength is limited. So let's move on to Ron Rivera saying that he's the starter. I agree with the decision only because of the offensive line. They just don't protect well. And Carson what's behind there is, is you know, he's very immobile. He's, he's another snail. He can barely move. He's like a statue back there. So Ron Rivera quoted says, stick with Taylor and what we're trying to do to establish. It is something to be quite frank. I do have to think about it at some point. But if we get back on track and play the way we're, we've played and do the things we've done, then we'll stick with where we stick. We'll stick where we are with Taylor, Heine, basically with Taylor Heineke. Um, now, yes, if, if Taylor doesn't play well against the Niners, then sure, I consider it. If he throws two picks in the first half, two fumbles or something like that, just has just wets the bed against the Niners, then yes, you do consider it. But I, if it were up to me, I would stick with Taylor, Taylor for the last three games, only because of the offensive line. I just don't trust Carson Wentz back there. I just think he's a statue. We saw eight sacks against Philly. We saw, what, three or four sacks in the first half against the Lions. He just holds on the ball, holds onto the football too long. And I just don't trust it. I've seen enough. Yes, I do think he has the better arm strength, obviously. More big plays could happen. Maybe he hits Curtis Hammond for a touchdown instead of Taylor just throwing to Curtis for a first down um, in that Giants game where Curtis was wide open. You know, Curtis had the toe tap to get out of bounds before he got out of bounds. I do think Carson Wentz hits him in stride and for a touchdown, just like he did in the Jaguars game to Terry McLaurin, but um, Taylor, they got to run the ball more. They got to, they got to use uh, Taylor as a runner and against Nick Bosa, I can see five or six or seven sacks against Carson Wentz, just like Aiden Hutchinson. I just, I could see it happen on Sunday. I really could. And I don't want to watch that. I don't want to see, I don't want to see the intentional grounding anymore. I don't want to see the sacks. I get it. Either quarterback, honestly, doesn't really give you much of a big advantage, but Taylor just gives you more life and more elusiveness in the pocket. And that's just what we need behind this offensive line. We have our identity. We have to run the football. We have to find our way to be effective and run the football against the Niners. They're a top defense in the NFL. They're one of the best defenses in the NFL. They're on a six or seven game winning streak. So, yes, I see how I would see how this goes in the first half. If Taylor doesn't play well, then, yes, I would, I would give him a short lease. The Browns game, the Cowboys game, they're all winnable games. But Deshaun Watson's playing good. He's playing okay. He looks like he's starting to get back to his normal, usual self on the football field. And then, of course, Dallas is playing good football. All right, you guys. Hail the Commanders. Peace.